Maybe if we encouraged a little bit more um, tasteful experimentation and also to remind ourselves that this is an artwork that you're working on and you're a musician, you're not just someone that's just blasting these things, that this is Absolutely. a musical instrument yeah. and that you have an imagination. Okay. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank that you. That was awesome. Thanks, Ladies Dave. and gentlemen, it's Mr. Dave King here at Drumio. Thank you so much for coming out, buddy. Yeah. I'm going to catch my breath for about 20 minutes. Go for it, man. Go for it. I'll introduce you. For those who don't know who Dave King is, uh, he is, well, obviously he's an incredible drummer, uh, also the drummer and uh, co-founder of Bad Plus, one of my favorite jazz groups. In fact, that was a jazz group that really got me into jazz, and uh, so I thank you so much for I'm that. I'm glad, thank you. Yeah, you also do a lot of other things. You're, um, uh, you have a quintet, the Dave King Trucking Company, Dave King Trio as well, King Speech. Like you have a lot of cool little side projects and projects of your own that you're, you're working with, so go and check him out online. If you want to follow him online, go to his website, daveking.net. That's right. You can see a little uh, about section where you can see what he's um, uh, currently working on. You can see tour dates and all that kind of stuff. And if you want to follow him online, you can check out his Instagram and social channels, which is at Google Bully. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the Instagram thing. That's the Instagram, Google Bully. That's right. So are you a bully on Google? No, no, it was a character I developed um, because um, I, was, I visited the Google campus. A friend of mine worked there and I went to their campus and yeah. in Northern California. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, because it's so wide open and everybody seems so friendly to each other, that if they hired one person that was just there to cause tension and he just kind of hangs around the campus and where are you going? And stops and grabs somebody's laptop and throws it on the ground. And <laughs> yeah. That'll be you? Yeah, I thought it'd be a fun character to... I love you know. it, I love it. Check him out on Instagram, at Google Bully. <laughs> and then the other cool thing that I haven't mentioned yet, you gotta check uh, Dave out on YouTube. He's got a really cool YouTube channel called Rational Funk, and he's got, you were saying, 60 episodes on there. Yeah. It, it is so funny, it's so good. You, ch you just gotta go and check it out. When you, after this lesson, go to YouTube and yeah. find Rational Funk. It's been over for a few years, but they're all there. They're, you know, they're great. We did it for about a year and a half. You've had some guests on there, Mark Giuliano on there. Yeah, well. Mark was on there, Jim Black. Yeah. Tim Burns, some other people. Reed from the Bad Plus, Reed Anderson. Yeah. It was fun. Very cool. Well, you're out here at Drumio now to teach a lesson on improving your improv. <laughs> we, we worked on that title for a long time. We <laughs> yeah, no doubt. had some focus groups. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they took, passed. Took us two years to think of that two title. Two years. We've been here. <laughs> I've been here for about two years. Yeah, yeah. I have a living with Dave. In good. a spare bedroom, with a, he has a Murphy bed. I've got to know Dave on a whole new level. Yeah, we Just, do. We work out together. We do. We're white belts in karate. We do our Pilates oh, every this morning. One, yeah. yeah, I've been looking at the wrong one. I've been looking at the still camera. 
Yeah, you still can't use it. We have a lot of cameras in here. <laughs> I'll just look at this one down here. So uh, improving your improv. Now, improv is a, is a tough, tough topic to teach. How do you teach someone to improv, you know? Yeah, improvising, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it is sort of a mysterious space. I'm not sure even how the neurological studies that have been um, uh, commissioned over the years to figure out what's actually going on when people are kind of improvising. But in a way, though, we're improvising all the time, talking, and yeah. uh, I, I think that there's, it's a language when you're playing music, and we talked about that in some of the, the lessons that we you know, put online today or whatever. The, that, the course that we've Yeah, about. And, and sort of rhythm languages, and I, it is a difficult thing, though, to actually get yourself in a pure improvisational space. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the greatest jazz musicians, some of them aren't na natu you know, necessarily improvising as much as they're kind of developed a language that's personal to them that they play within and rearrange letters and, and numbers and things like that. And I try to put myself in a position to not play many riffs, like just even looking over and seeing, oh, there's a music stand here, whatever this was, we didn't use all day. And it's yeah. like, oh, that, I've played on those before, they sound good and mm -hmm. do whatever. It's almost like setting yourself up to have a dramatic and sometimes vulnerable space to work within right. um, to create these sort of rhythmic structures or you know, just to, to develop a language that you can use when called upon and not feel like tense or hiccuping through it. Right. And not fe feeling like you have to rely on your riffs and rely on, you know, things to just, you know, flashy things to get you over. It's more right. like actually trying to create some sort of artistic space. Yeah. And it, so for those watching, this is going to be a real cool lesson. We have done stuff on, on, on creativity and soloing and stuff already on Dramio, but this is a cool different approach, and I think you're going to like it. We're going to talk about uh, preparing yourself for improv and basically um, the technical agendas to improv improvisation. You right. Know? Um, so throughout this, uh, you're going to do a lot of improv. In fact, this whole lesson is improv. That's correct. Yeah, I don't even know who I am. <laughs> it I'm might not be that good. <laughs> yeah, we're making it up on the spot. <laughs> so where do you where do you begin, man? What are some tools that you can start uh, developing for this? Well, you know, one thing if you're interested in, you know, jazz music and, and contemporary jazz, whatever, using of course, lots of different reference points throughout music history. You know, modern jazz musicians are dealing with a lot of texts, not just the the texts of jazz history, but music from all over the world and contemporary classical music and 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 you know, lots of different, like I said, reference points to start improvising with. One thing that I thought um, I could do is do a little playing based around just a mid-tempo kind of swing feel, mm -hmm. um, almost like a, just a small group jazz type setting. And then kind of talk about what I'm thinking about when I'm just kind of getting the sort of orchestra, the drums together, yeah. you know, all these different tones, um, using different touches to get different sounds, to prepare myself for, for a situation when I'm with people and I can react or not react to things or I can support things or not support things, create counterpoint, create tension, yeah. create the release of tension, all of these things. And, and then I can talk about you know, just note value improvising where I just have a quarter note in my head at different tempos that I play against and I subdivide I love it. and I do these things. Yeah. And then you could do the same thing with different time signatures or um, focus on playing over the bar or all these other ideas uh, that, you know, basically unlocks you. Yeah. And that's kind of, I suppose, the, the way a melodic improviser uses either, you know, um, Melody-based improvising, or chord scale-based improvising, or anything where you're just you're learning how to thread your your way through different chord changes and whatnot, understanding the way that works, but that's still not personalized. Right. And what you really want to try and do, in my opinion, is prepare yourself to sort of receive the the information as it comes. Love that. And so yeah. that a lot of that is about unlocking um, channels that that hiccup, you know, give you hiccups or yeah. Um, stop the flow of maybe ideas coming in, which everyone experiences. Oh, yeah. But um, I guess these are ways that I used to kind of put myself in a position to have to deal with these things and let them keep flowing and not stop. Yeah. And try, not, try, to, try to keep a, a stream of consciousness of ideas, if you will. Let's give it a try. Okay, I'll start with a sort of a jazz thing. Yeah. This will just be, 
you know, kind of a complete idea, and then I'll talk about how it breaks down and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, what was going through your head? That's a, that's sure. a big one. I'd love to see. To a lot of it is going through my head is thinking that the sushi in the near the ocean is better than in the Midwest. In Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That was something I was thinking about during that last <laughs> solo since we had sushi today. I love it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. That was beautiful, man. So what was going through your head? Well, there, I, I was kind of playing like I was soloing a bit. Okay. So I, I probably wouldn't have been going that nuts if I was having to interact. But maybe in a duo setting. Sure. Something like that could have been nice with a saxophone or something. Yeah. With the sort of center of the time being... I was experimenting with different triplet figures and then double time figures, 16th note. You know, playing. And 16th note, yeah. just kind of Using those uh, subdivisions with just a straight corno feel, the idea that I'm just trying to create streams of ideas. Right. I'm not necessarily concerned with the ultimate taste zone at this point. Sure. It's much more like here's a, here, I'm using dynamics, tonal things, moving around the drums, but the whole thing is this sort of time choir. You know, it's got yeah. it. It there, there is a center to the time, but it's almost like oh, I'm ex I'm experimenting with different, like I said, tonal quality, dynamic color. But at the same time, always adhering to this sort of pulse. Mm. And I'll do something like that. I used to do that a lot more when I was practicing a lot more. But in different tempos. And then sometimes I don't even have to think about I, I don't think about it so much like in a swing feel. Or whatever. I could just take the same idea that her whole first solo, for instance, yeah. was based on this, this, this idea of here. Broken 16th note.
It's just this. I like looking at you the whole time there yeah. because then I don't have to think about the sushi. I'm giving as much. you. I'm giving you. Uh, what, right. what is it? Uh, all the <laughs> encouragement you need. Exactly. <laughs> but that idea that. What I'm hearing there are these syncopated streams that can kind of go over the bar, use different groupings, five groupings. But you hear this almost marching band drum, drum line. That, you hear yeah, that yeah. sort of center, and it's just funky. Now it's easy to get tripped up mm. and be like, ah, where do I go from here? And that's this idea that the, the stream keeps going, all this different syncopation. And these aren't riffs, you know? They're more like syncopated musical phrases that just are streams coming out. Now are you thinking ahead when you're doing this? Are you thinking what should I kind of do next? Should I go through this pattern next or this no, grouping I'm, next? Or is it just you're just doing it and you're reacting to how it sounds? Yeah, I'm just kind of reacting almost like a line. It's almost like a line drawing in art, you know, where you have, you start this line and yeah, it's yeah. gonna go where it's gonna go and, but there is a, uh, there is a flow to it, a shape, a composition. Yeah. And so I'm not saying this is something that happens right away, but I'm saying these are sort of the spaces that I use to kind of, the idea of practicing improvising is very interesting, yeah, you know, yeah. because you know, we can work on different you know, time signatures, uh, compositions, you've got to read a chart, you've got to do whatever. Some of that information is there. This is just information for you yeah. to you know, borrow from, use from, to, to stop those sort of moments of tense, um, lack of ideas or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes even in, in jazz, sometimes if I'm playing any some up-tempo or any other tempo, just having a nice strong ride beat, which you talk about in the other lessons, um, kind of is a safe space to go to yeah. when you're sort of like, ah, you know, yeah, yeah. you've got a lot of information coming at you or you're whatever. So you've still got this really solid time space. The exact same thing with what I'm doing there. I still feel a very strong internal quarter note. Mm. So even if I'm doing you know, these sort of triplet based things. I've still got, even I'll use huge spaces or, 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 or rests, yeah. I can still he he hear this sort of center to everything. And, and for me, even the most abstract music, the most avant-garde music can be rubato music, having that pulse, whether it be esoteric or a strict rational pulse, right, right. Um, is, is the key to all of it as far as I'm concerned. So you're, just, you're singing that quarter note. Absolutely. You're subdividing that I'm, I'm just note. feeling that, that space and then trying to improvise within it. I'm not trying to rely on a 12 8 jazz pattern with a bell symbol or something. Right. I'm, th of course, all of those things I've worked very hard to do in all these different. Ed Blackwell based patterns or whatever is one of my favorite drummers, some of these things, but also just be able to improvise within those spaces in a way that feels fresh. It feels like I'm actually taking risks, I'm actually creating a dramatic element, and um, hopefully the audience can ride along with that and right. feel that from you. And I think that's what makes it, to me, a high art form is that there is risk involved and, like I said, vulnerability involved. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I like knowing that someone is in there trying to deal, not just like coolly doing everything they know or they can something do. something yeah. times and times, yeah. Yeah, and when you, see some, when you hear some of the greatest jazz masters like Tony Williams and you know, uh, some of my heroes like Elvin Jones, uh, Paul Motion, Jack DeJanette, people like that, you can hear this, it's real, it's real improvising, it's real risk taking, especially you know, certain people like Paul Motion or Jack DeJanette or people that are edgier and, and that use elements of, oh, yeah. of um, really progressive ideas and modern ideas. Um, they're not, it's not always nailed. Yeah. You know, it's not always this idea that everything has to be um, you know, really nailed and perfect. Not, I don't know. I mean, in certain elements of your music career, yes. You know, you're playing drums for a big pop gig. You're playing drums with Justin Timberlake. You can't just be back there doing all this esoteric lunacy. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, yeah. you've got to be like nail it to the sequencer <laughs> and do your thing. Yeah. But as an improviser, you know, there are other tool sets and there are other parameters that so, have to be adhered to. So we got that. We, we understand your, your headspace. Um, and that's, I think, the goal for a lot of people. I'd love to get in that headspace where 
first off, your egos aside, and you're 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 okay with trying stuff out and improving. Yeah. Um, but uh, now, how do you how do we get there? Like, what are some of the steps that you took, or some of the the ways that we can build that facility? Yeah. Um, well, like I said, yeah. you know, um, it depends on. I mean, if you have, if I'm talking to a broad audience of like. I'm not sure the life experiences or the technical abilities, but I would say there are ways to immerse yourself in those languages of, of creative music, jazz music, by, by checking out all the master recordings and all of the, you know, the, 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 the mountain of music that's out there to just immerse yourself in languages that might turn you on. But as a player, just setting up, you don't even have to be, you know, someone that, can play a really great jazz ride beat or whatever. It's much more like if you're just interested in getting an improvisational state together that you can use in pop and rock and anything. I would say, um, you know, trying to diminish the idea that there are roles in the in the. Um, and I don't mean <laughs> technically roles. I mean role playing. That the hi hat is this. It, it plays this role in the thing, and gotcha. the snare drum plays this role in the thing, and the floor tom plays this role. All these rational roles that we hear. Instead, maybe think about the whole thing as this sort of tonal orchestra, and then from there, you know, you can start to just play with it. Okay. And that's one of the ways that I play with touch, and I play. And then I'll give myself a center or not. You know, I can I can say I'm going to have a center. I'm going to focus on. A 12-8 kind of triplet feel to a center, mm -hmm. and then maybe I'll say I'm going to do it without one. I'll do it with one stick in my hand. Right. So then it'll be like, okay, I've set myself up. I've given myself a couple of rules, and then within that arena, then I try run. to explore those spaces while keeping the rules of the arena. Right. Then there can be some moments when I've decided I'm just going to create some sort of drum piece that doesn't necessarily adhere to a time relationship. It's much more tonal or color based. I can bring out some time vignettes within it mm -hmm. or not, but I give myself two to three minutes. I talk about this when I teach. I give myself two to three minutes at the end of a maybe a really regimented technical um, exercise. Yeah. You know, or I'm just even playing ride cymbal, up tempo ride cymbal for 10 minutes or doing whatever where you're just feeling really comfortable doing whatever. Yeah, yeah. Then give yourself some space to just improvise and explore the instrument. So you want me to play another example right now Show of this kind of, of like yeah. so if I gave if I said to myself those parameters like I said so like a 12-8 kind of thing and I've decided I'm doing this now I've done this many times so I'm not sitting here going like oh what am I going to do I mean yeah. I have an idea of yeah. you know like something I want to do but within that I don't know really yeah. what the flow will be or what the so again you're facing the realities of what improvising is mm -hmm. it's not this pure from the mountaintop. Um, channel of you know There's still galactic energy, but there is some of that in there, yeah. and um, at the highest level, there's a lot of it. Yeah, and so you prepare yourself to sort of you know get into a space of like those lines start to appear and the flow starts to appear, and like any great saxophone solo mm -hmm. or any great artist, you know, any great composition, any great, it just you know how how these things begin and end are, are mysterious. Right. So within them, you just try to follow that line. Okay. So, okay, I'll think about that. Okay. So here's my boom, 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 boom. I'll start there. Okay. Okay. The four.
Unreal. So then, that was unreal, man. Oh, thank you. That was very cool, yeah. So there you have this sort of stream of this sort of then every now and again I busted out some 16th and it's just a line that you follow and again this idea that you're touching the drums this is an organic ex experience mm -hmm. and personal and so are you are you singing melodies at that point in your head or are you like just take us through that little thought, thought process. There. Yeah, well, again, this, this thing, it doesn't have to start there. Of course, you can just start at any rudimentary level by just thinking triplets mm -hmm. and thinking these things and then it, developing a language of like, you know, I'm not sure where the line crosses from struggling through it, even though I went through all those struggles of, yeah. of these things. But again, recognizing music as a language yeah. and rhythm as a language and as also yeah. a tonal, colorful, melodic language. Yeah. So right there I've got these, all these things I can do and hit the, hit the drums a certain way, touch them a certain way, but I could also start just with a basic. Here's monodynamic, yeah. sticks in my hands, I'm not thinking ultimate you know, like I'm the genius improviser that I am. Yeah. You are a genius no, I mean, no. improviser. <laughs> I'm, 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 that was a joke. No, I don't, I don't, I'm I don't saying that with a Midwestern humility, which yeah, is sort yeah. of passive aggressive. You are very humble. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the yeah. point is, is that <laughs> I'm just gonna play those triplets right now, and I'm, I'm thinking monodynamically. Here's that same language. Yeah. Ba 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 boom ba boom ba 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 boom. Right. Ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, boom. They can be separate from each other, they can overlap. I was getting more into dynamics. Yeah. Here I go, I'm getting excited again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, yeah. I decided I'm 16th. I can use rests, so I don't have to, it's not just a constant stream of 16th notes. Yeah, yeah. But I give that as my parameter. I'm playing 16th notes and rests. I messed up there, but check it out. We're in there playing rock. The hill comes down to the middle. Now, if you heard a fill, if we both heard a fill like that yeah, yeah. on some pop tune, we'd, yeah. we'd all be a little bit like, oh, that's unique. That, that's fresh. Yeah, but yeah. that's just 16. But it's because you're using the whole drum set with this mm -hmm. less you know, more dynamic and breaking up the roles. Yeah. But you know, there's a, there yeah. it is again. It's yeah. like, well, we're improving. We're just sitting here going like, oh, I'm gonna play these odd phrases. And, yeah. and, and, and this is how you get to a space, in my opinion, where you, it doesn't matter what kind of music you're playing in or time signature. So if I, if I, if you wanted me to play like a, an example of odd time yeah, version. Yeah, let's do that, yeah. Okay, so here's a seven version. Okay. Um, so seven's an odd time that people like to play in both jazz and in rock and prog sorts, music yeah. or prog rock or whatever. Yeah. So, um, so. You hear the 16th notes and, yeah. no, and rest.
just thinking along those, that's kind of a, you know, the so beginnings of that kind of thing, of subdividing and playing over the bar and... Beginnings, just yeah. begin there. Uh, but what kind of an exercise do, w w did you do or could you recommend to students uh, that want to get into this and w just to get free with those 16th notes? Kind of like what you did there, I guess? With, well, uh, that, I mean, that was more, I guess, an advanced version of like playing seven. I mean, that's, and, and you know, uh, and we're talking about improvising within them, not just playing figures you've worked out and doing whatever. Yeah. But again, I would say just s starting very simple and just playing note values, like if you're playing eighth, If I'm playing in seven, that's a simple version of a two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what I would try and do personally is try not to repeat myself mm -hmm. a lot because sometimes you can get into a zone where all of a sudden you're spending bass drums been playing the same thing over. Yeah. One, I'm not really playing my artwork right now. I'm preparing myself on right. some level. Right. Yeah. So I'm just kind of moving around the drums and trying to think in those yeah. in those values. The same thing when I did the 12-8 thing. If I'm playing 4-4, four, four, just playing swing, I'm, it, that becomes more of an art thing when I'm trying to play some jazz versions of whatever. Right now, just this idea of moving around your drums and ex experimenting with different touch. Yeah. Um, that's really how you can start to break down the barriers of mysteries of improvising. Love that. So you set, set a couple parameters yeah. and then just free form 16th notes with rests if you can. Yeah, around. eighth notes, yeah. triplets of the values of those things. Yeah. Use rests, different phrases. You make sure you use space. Yeah. So it's not just a stream of 16th notes going around. Now that's its own challenge, which I used to do as well, which is no rests. Okay, yeah. You yeah. know, and that can be a thing. So when you're doing this, even amount of bars. Yeah, how, how do you how do you prevent yourself from stopping when your when your ears kind of um, freak you out? You know what I mean? Like uh, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but I remember doing this many times, and I would hit a cymbal and um, I would not expect it, and then it would stop me from playing, or yep. it would throw me off where I take an extra. You know. That's that trial and error, like you said, if you're, if you're used to hearing something a certain way, that's the whole idea is we're, we're jumbling up the roles yeah. within the kit, we're exploring While still where keeping we can that go, while note. keeping it going. And of course, if you hit a cymbal in a space with your left hand where you usually are, yeah, whatever, yeah. and you've got an accent going there, this is a perfect opportunity to be aware mm. that you can control those moments, not be messed up by them. Try to repeat oh, yeah. a moment that 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 um, messed you up. Yeah. I know what you mean, though. If you're doing, you know, if you're different, if you, as simple as if you're doing triplets, and you start doing the main values of four. Like, Values, if you're, it, it can definitely mess with your ear. It's one of the great things yeah. um, that a lot of great masters use is, is this sort of An illusion, illusion, and yeah. polyrhythmic illusion, and all these other things yeah. by using rests and accents and odd groupings. These things all are developed by just continuing these basic streams and then experimenting within them. And I really think, and then of course this idea of the rubato version or just playing a drum piece, which we can do at the end if you want to do yeah, that. Yeah, let's, let's do that at the end. Okay. Um, a couple last uh, things that I'll, I want you to touch on. One of them is um, the dynamic challenge too, because you, you're just moving around the kit, but you also are using a lot of dynamics in there. So how, how, do, how do you practice that? How do you get that into the mix of improv? Well, again, this idea that, you know, oftentimes when people are doing exercises where they're reading accents, mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be difficult to realize that an accent, to me, is the sort of hill and valley. It's the to anyone, I suppose. It's 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 really what creates the shape of of great syncopation or um, of all music. The the, the 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 obviously it's the basis of all phrasing. Yeah. And so the idea that you know how do you get to that space 
um, either you know when you're working on things where you're accenting a ride beat and then you've got a figure you're playing with whatever and you're working on something maybe academic. Mm -hmm. M my thing was always that that um, we have to find a way for the drums to sing to speak like a musical instrument because it is a musical instrument. Right. So right. often it, it, I feel like it's an instrument that that hovers around a space of of and this by no means is damning anyone's approach, but it hovers in a space of not fully explored mm. a lot of the time in the popular, um, in the most popular sure. cultural yeah, spaces yeah, yeah. Of, the, of, the, of the greatest shredding drummers that show up at the festivals and go blah, 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 and blow people's minds. As brilliant as that is and as, and as fun as it is to listen to, yeah. and I dig it too, yeah. and it's fun to do yeah. if you can do it, and it's cathartic, yeah. and it's all these sort of like primal human element that goes into what's so great about drums. At the same time, it's like, think about what's possible versus just like, what's possible is how fast you can play on a double pedal, like <laughs> double stroke mm -hmm. rolls on a double. Oh, it's yeah. like monodynamic yeah. avalanches coming at you with like spraying, you know, like a bunch of <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. I Instead like of yeah. like all of the idiosyncratic Corners and unswept places, if you will, in the in rhythmic language that are possible. Not only that you can use in your compositions and use in whatever music you're playing, from the most banal pop music yeah. to the to the to the most insanely uh, s stressfully academic, yeah, and also you know like deeply spiritually cathartic music that there is. Right, right. I don't mean to say. That first of all, not that pop, all pop music is banal, but I'm saying like we all know there's some banal pop yeah, music I, I where the drum roll, is, the drum position is like, hey, this is what it is. Tight there's an artwork to be able to do that, but there are little things that you can bring a personality to. And some of the heaviest rock drummers, as we know, the ones that are the Mount Rushmore of rock drummers, which most people agree on, yeah. they all to the letter brought something personal yeah. and some sort of approach that left the left the norm right whether it just be a, an absolutely ridiculous feel or a touch or definitely like ideas you didn't hear before these people arrived mm -hmm. and they contributed to the to the pantheon of like the great drumming and pop music yeah and i'm talking about in the 60s to to you know to to John Bonham, to yeah. you know, you start to list of them all, yeah. Stuart Copeland or people like that, where Big there's time. one and only. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, those there's a lot of room for that still, I think. Mm. And Interesting. even yeah. with the even with the the commercialization of everything, there's still this space that that um, that you know drummers can inhabit to really uh, uh, state uh, uh, you know claim a space in the music that that takes it to another level. And you know there are so many incredible drummers out there playing the big pop gigs, and they're all masters. Yeah. But I'm not sure how deeply personal. You know, my opinion is is like right. I'm not sure I can sit there and go, oh, that's that. I mean, yeah, a lot of it is just this sort of impersonal mastery. Yeah. Whereas maybe if we encouraged a little bit more um, tasteful experimentation, and also to remind ourselves that this is an artwork that you're working on. Mm -hmm. And you're a musician. You're not just someone that's just blasting these things. That this Absolutely. is a musical instrument. Yeah. And that you have an imagination. Yeah. And you have um, the ability to hear, um, you know, music in these in this in well, these instruments. It also separates you from other drummers too, because yeah, I can hear Dave King and his playing. It's a personality that you have on the drums, and I can hear, you know, you can hear John Bonham in his. In his playing, whereas if you're just structured playing the, the, the beats, the patterns that you need to play, a timekeeper and a drummer, not not really a musician, it really doesn't really separate you from the rest, right? Yeah, and I mean, and there's like I keep saying, there's a great artwork, as we all know, there's a, to to being that person that goes in and does the job and and nails it and yeah. is the working. Um, thing and then you roll into whatever uh, drum showcase festivaly thing and you blast a bunch of insane chops and everybody goes insane. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, like the contributions to the artwork of drumming, right. there's a ton of room for people to be thinking about um, ways to incorporate that musically, not yeah. just in your practice space and not just 
in your not, and not just in jazz and yeah. not and not just in these things where you think oh it's jazz so there's a lot more room for you to be whatever well there's spaces everywhere mm -hmm. in all music yeah, big time. and and so when i think about improvising i don't think about improvising just within the jazz canon i think about improvising um and ways I can use it within everything because I play all music. Yeah. Or at least, not just improvising, but at least taking tonal qualities from my improvisational uh, uh, explorations yeah. and using them in in regular beats. Or yeah. if I'm playing in a hip hop thing and I'm thinking, well, what if I put a towel on my floor tom and I muted my snare a certain way and I played my hi-hat a certain, someone like Chris Dave, for instance, mm -hmm. who's a master at, master at that, um, yeah. manipulating that, that sort of Dilla um, time warp, temporal yeah. time fractures of yeah, like yeah. whatever. And that's caused a way that people are listening to that music. Mm -hmm. That's changed it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that um, th there's tons of room in all music for that. Yeah. You know, no matter how, um, I, I suppose just encouraging experimentation. Yeah. Is, is really important and I think that's just the more time you spend just searching and listening to yourself and using your imagination, I think improvising starts to come up just like any other language, just like being able to play drum line, just like being able to play great modern country music or whatever. Totally. Well, I mean, it, just the way we're talking right now, where it's all improv, but we're so comfortable in our own language that we're able to do that. That's exactly correct. And um, you need to get to that stage on the drums. Right? I think it's important, yeah. yeah. I think no matter what kind of music you're playing, you don't have to be relegated to this sort of like, and here we go again with the same, you know, anonymous masterful drum solo or the yeah. same yeah. masterful, you know, just kind of blowing through things and doing yeah, yeah. You know, and ultimately, though, who are you and what do you have to say and yeah. what can you bring to this this family and what can you bring to the evolution of the music? Very and cool. in jazz, this is the same, you know, it's not like everybody playing jazz out there is like ultimately blazing some trail. You can be incredibly proficient and hireable and doing all these things. That's wonderful, mm -hmm. but there is always room to yeah. to try to contribute to this language, and I suppose I'm interested in humbly attempting to try and that, yeah. to, to at least search for something that that that's personal. Big time. Well, we're um, that, that's a whole topic. I'd love to do a podcast with you at some point, man, especially on that topic alone. Um, but we're running low on time here, and I want to kind of wrap everything up in terms of improv. Um, for a takeaway for the, for the students watching this, because there's a lot of great great quotes and great, great information here, um, but what are some takeaways that we could do and we could use to start bettering our, our improv? Uh, I know we've already talked about a lot of it, but maybe just recap. Well, I suppose, number one, just putting yourself in a safe position of experimenting with, like I said, simple relationships to a quarter note mm -hmm. or or a feel. If you're playing some just jazz ride beat and you you can give yourself the structure of a tune you like. Yeah. You can play, if you like Thelonious Monk, those are very memorable tunes. They're, yeah. they're, they're typically 32 bar forms um, or 12 bar blueses or whatever. And you can just play a nice ride beat in different tempos, play, in, play waltzes, play in three, play whatever, and give yourself the parameters to improvise within those situations. You're not necessarily just playing time, you're exploring a little bit. I mean, you're playing time, but you know you're not backing. You're not. You're not playing like you know piano trio time sure, or something. Yeah, yeah. You're 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 experimenting. You're playing solo. Yeah. But you're playing within that parameter, different tempos, different whatever. So you can start with those structures, or you can start with zero jazz structure and more of just a like I was doing there of like oh well that's kind of language that's it's got almost a West African language with the twelve eight feel and mm -hmm. all these other things. But I'm really an improviser. I'm not sitting here saying that I'm a guy that um, understands the nine million year history of West African drumming, whatever. It's more like I'm an American artist, which means I'm, I've, I hear things, I try to have an honest relationship with those things, and I try to attribute them to my life experience. Right. I use them within the avant-garde, I use them within improvised settings, I use them within you know, um, moments of, you know, frantic creativity. I try to draw upon what I've heard yeah. in my life from electronic music to jazz to whatever and, and I try to use it as an improvisational language. So it's the same thing if I'm sitting down and I'm doing these things, if I'm just exploring on the drum set, I'll give myself that parameter and then I let myself have free reign dynamically, my touch, everything. Love it. So again, recapping, sometimes take if you have 90 symbols, take them all away and have one. Mm -hmm. You know, give yourself limitations. Mm -hmm. Play only your bass drum when you have no hi-hat foot anymore, or just hi-hat foot where the bass drum would be. 
you know, pushing yourself to hear the roles change, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's incredible when you think about someone like even Jim Kelton or somebody where you have snare drums positioned everywhere. Yeah. Or, and what that immediately does yeah. while you're playing, you've got to, deep tuned snare drums, tight tuned snare drums. Now that's a great way to, to improve your creativity. How, how absolutely. Mess with, with your, your mess with your setups. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that would, then you'd say someone like Jim Keltner, who's a, who's a master uh, studio musician, master drummer of all levels. Yeah. But Jim Keltner isn't a, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't go out and play, you know, a hundred dates a year of j you know, progressive jazz music or whatever. Okay. You know, he's, he's, he's someone but who uses I, I feel, you know, I don't want to be presumptuous, but there is an improvisational spirit there. Right. There's this like these fills or these things that come out. They have it. They have a personal idiosyncratic quality that belong to him, and that's why he's on the highest level right. of those things. It's like a masterful use of taste yeah. and color and whatever, and it's messing with those systems. Yeah. Oh, what if I have a snare here and a snare here and a snare here and I've got shakers taped to me and I've got all these other <laughs> ideas that are deeply personal. Yeah. Well, that shouldn't end with just Jim Keltner. That's you know what I yeah, mean? Right, There's so right. many there are so many spaces we all can be contributing to. Yeah. And sometimes we need to free ourselves from the fears of leaving that nest of like, well, this is a comfortable space historically. I've studied all the masters and I know what to do here and I would Hey man, that's if that's your Role in life, you know, that's beautiful. Yeah. But there is room, I keep saying, to, to um, personalize it and to try and contribute something out there. Very cool, man. Very yeah. cool. I love this stuff. There's a we uh, we filmed the course with you earlier on today for all you guys who are Drumio members. If you're not, go and check out drumio.com/trial and, and give it give it a try because we filmed a great course on developing your sound for jazz um, with you. And you talked a little bit about this stuff in more depth. But uh, yep. thank you so much, man. Like I could, we could go for another hour, I'm sure, especially when we're improving. Um, <laughs> but uh, is there any last things you wanted to say before we wrap up, and then we'll get you to play a solo in a more roboto feel? Sure, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, we covered so much today. I'm I know. almost at a. I'm almost at a loss. Other than you know, I'm still. I think anyone that's that cares about, um, you know, improvising uh, and. You know, pushing yourself out of comfortable spaces. Um, you know, I think that it's just important to th that no matter where you're at, never consider yourself um, finished and mm -hmm. like rely on sort of things you know you can do well. I mean, we all do that on some level. Everybody does rely on certain comfortable spaces, and that's okay. But but I think it's just really important to continue searching for a dramatic element in the music. And that again elevates it to some other space. It's, it's, there's, I suppose there's nothing more um, human than a certain level of vulnerability and frailty. And I think that um, when that enters your art realm, um, people can relate to that. No yeah. matter how intellectual it might be or no right. matter how um, ab abstract. Yeah, yeah. When there's a human being going for something, everyone can kind of get behind that idea, no matter what you do in your life. It's relatable. It's relatable. Love it's it. relatable yeah, yeah. to the idea we might not get out of this, you know? Yeah. And yeah. there's something beautiful, vulnerable, and humble about that. Yeah. And so I just think no matter where you're at in your development from the most masterful drummers ever, I mean, I have to say, you know, I think, I think on some level, that level of mastery can be a little boring, hmm. you know? Interesting. You know, it's just sort of like. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, who wants to hang out with like the most like uh, unbelievably nailing it? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested in those. Is that why I don't those, have any uh, friends, Dave? Uh, yeah, that uh, me neither. Yeah. I, I, I have to rethink that idea <laughs> because no one wants to hang out because I nail everything so hard. Yeah. I don't think I nailed much today. <laughs> I'm gonna have so many friends when I leave here. It's unbelievable. We'll, we'll, we'll find out in the YouTube comments. I'm sure how many friends. We <laughs> this have. guy doesn't know what he's talking. <laughs> who is this <laughs> lunatic? Yeah. Uh, so good, man. Hey, thank you so much, buddy. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up there because time is of the essence. But if you guys liked what you saw here, come to drumio.com slash trial. Check out the, the whole course. It'll be up in a couple months from now. If you're watching this lesson live, that is. And uh, make sure you follow Dave King online, daveking.net, or on Instagram at the Google Bully, or just at Google Bully. And um, check out his YouTube channel, which he hasn't updated in a while, but there's 60 great episodes from his rational funk um, persona.
Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's, that's a persona. <laughs> Leave it there. Okay, <laughs> then I'm gonna head out the room. You're gonna play us out with a solo. Sure. Free time, right? Sure. Yeah, and it might it might incorporate elements of time here and there, but we won't think about that. I'm not thinking about that. Improv it. Yeah. And take your time. With I'm it. gonna. This one's gonna be about 45 minutes long. Perfect. All right. So anybody who tunes out, it's not you're not keeping it real. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> we'll see you guys all later. <laughs> okay. Bye. -bye.